Sydney's City Rail Network, operated by Railcorp, is one of the most complex railway systems in the world, using a diverse range of trains. Between 2003 and 2009, UGL manufactured 122 outer suburban cars, or Oscars, in two stages, to help modernise Railcorp's fleet with 30 world-class four-car trains that are modern, safer and more comfortable than ever before. With over 1,300 services each week, covering half a million kilometres every month, the Oscar fleet travels between Sydney and destinations on the New South Wales South Coast, Central Coast and Blue Mountains. However, Railcorp's continuing mission to modernise an ageing fleet meant that in 2009, more new trains were needed. But building a train is a complex and expensive task that takes around 30,000 man-hours over nine months, requires 4,850 different components, produced from half a million assembly items, which have been procured from almost 500 suppliers located all around the world. And after more than six years since the first Oscar was ordered, both Railcorp and UGL identified a need to work closer together to manufacture the carriages more efficiently, with better cost visibility and to a higher standard than before. We needed confidence that a further order would be on budget and on time, and we needed to apply the lessons learned from stages one and two. So we negotiated a different style of contract and governance, new for both parties. A key feature is the sharing of cost savings or cost overruns to incentivise both parties to work effectively. This led to stage three with a further order for 72 cars, later extended to 99, after these new arrangements were seen to be working. But the contract wasn't the only change. Railcorp and UGL were also keen to review and update the day-to-day -day communication, supply of parts, entire manufacturing process, quality control and safety testing. As a result, a truly transparent, collaborative approach was adopted. In terms of our approach, we've got a really structured approach. However, the most important thing was our mindset. Both parties really wanted to work together on this project. From the very early days we came up with this rule that we call the no surprises rule, whereby we keep each other informed and we share all information. How we did that was mainly through the joint meetings, such as a weekly project team meeting, a risk meeting and a war room meeting. We've also got a joint schedule and importantly we've got local people on site and we do all our inspections together through the bulk phase but also through the testing commission phase. And to oversee it all, equally represented teams at all levels ensure that issues are either averted, dealt with quickly or resolved compatibly. A project leadership team of two senior management representatives from each organisation provides guidance and support. And we also have a dispute resolution board, three independent senior people with wide legal, contract and dispute management experience who meet with the parties on a regular basis, who assist with ensuring that disputes do not occur and if they do occur, facilitate resolution. We also set up a joint sourcing review team where Railcorp and UGL combine their buying power when resolving supplier, technical and commercial issues. Good communication is the key to making everything run smoothly. The two project teams meet weekly and we work in accordance with the Joint Procedures Manual which sets out a code to be followed in terms of communications and relationships management. <laughs> But even with these new foundations in place, how exactly is each four-car Oscar set built? Our approach regarding manufacturing was twofold. Firstly, we ran various lessons learned workshops where we revised what we did in the past and we also looked at what we could do better on this project. Secondly, was to look at the world's best practice. In other words, what do other peoples do around the world and what could we adopt for our project? We chose Lean as our continuous improvement tool and in line with the Lean methodologies we ran a two-week dedicated training workshop for everybody on the project. We've set up a one-directional production line with 16 defined workstations. We've balanced those stations to get an even workload between them and we've got a five-day timetable before the car moves from one station to another station. Our ultimate goal is to get a repeated and consistent process that's the basis of a quality product. The first stations in the production line involve the fabrication of the overall structure. The roof, walls, decks and panelling sub-assemblies are produced at Station 1. 
Working on an inverted carriage, stations 2, 3 and 4 produce the underframe with its wiring, piping, braking and mechanical components. The Station 5 rollover jig turns the completed underframe upright and mounts it on slave bogies, allowing it to be rolled along the remainder of the production line. At the Station 6 main assembly jig, the Oscar really begins to take shape. The walls, equipment decks, panelling and roof are attached to the underframe to form the shell. Various brackets are positioned throughout the carriage at Station 7, as well as the welding in of electrical cabinets and frames. And at Station 8, the doors, spandrel panels, the area between the upper and lower deck panels and windows are installed. Stations 9 and 10 complete the wiring in the carriage and crew compartment. The pantograph is installed on trailer cars and the outer shell of the new Oscar is complete. To ensure the carriage is ready for regular cleaning and Sydney's weather, Station 11A is a water test. And when the carriage is confirmed to be watertight, the internal fit-out can commence, beginning with the air conditioning ducts, window frames, as well as external GRP panels and mechanical components at Station 11B. Stations 12 and 13 result in the carriage stairs, vinyl floors, centre partitions and internal GRP panels being installed. And Station 14 is the final fit-out with the wiring of electrical equipment, speakers, camera and radio equipment and gangways the painter's work at station 15 and to finish the new Oscar carriage final continuity testing of all wiring harnesses and cables takes place at station 16 completion of manufacture is followed by nine test and commissioning stations involving single car two car and four car static testing and inspections 47 test reports are then reviewed by Railcorp to ensure consistent build and quality and that the train is safe to operate Safety and reliable train operation is everything for us in this project. To that end, each completed train is assessed under a jointly developed testing, commissioning and delivery plan. And we use a web-based collaborative communication system which has transformed the way we communicate. It speeds up the document submission and review process and almost eliminates paper-based technical correspondence. And we have open book visibility of costs which enables us to track with confidence the costs of the contract as it progresses. Teams from Railcorp and UGL process a further eight test reports during on-track testing in the Newcastle and Sydney areas, covering train powering and braking, as well as passenger interfaces, such as doors, seating and communication systems. Once all testing and final detailing is complete, UGL officially hands the train over to Railcorp's facility at Everly in Sydney from which it conducts even further independent assessment with more than 2,000 kilometres of simulated passenger service on the City Rail network. Only now can our new Oscar train finally enter passenger service. Whilst we've got a lot of systems, processes and procedures in place, it's fair to say that people is the key of what we do here. We employ mainly specialists, in other words tradesmen, taking into account that they will do about five days of work before, before they repeat a specific task. How we manage is through a visual management system. Um, every production station has a production board where all the workers are encouraged to write on all the issues and the improvements. We formed a production support team, people that really lives next to the line and walk the line together with production to sort all these issues and the improvements. The objective is to build a product that's fit, form and function. So in other words, it um, does what it's supposed to do. It's built to the right configuration. In other words, the customer specification and also aesthetically pleasing. Our goal is to meet the expectation of our ultimate customer who's a traveling public that takes these trains every day. The travelling public of New South Wales are not the only winners from this project. The Hunter and Mid-North Coast community is also benefiting with the creation of jobs. UGL's Newcastle facility employs 182 Oscar project workers, including 20 apprentices. Indirectly, it has also created a further 200 jobs with local suppliers, contractors and support functions to the project in the region. A further 40 jobs have also been created at UGL's Taree facility, which manufactures major components such as bogies for the project. 
In 2011, Oscar Stage 3 won the Product Development category at the New South Wales Australian Institute of Project Management Achievement Awards, followed by a high commendation at the National Awards event. All remaining Stage 3 Oscar carriages are expected to be in service by mid-2013 and this rolling stock partnership is helping to ensure customers can get where they need to go on time, safely and in more comfort than ever before.